Leadership Development with Andreas, Jonathan, and Marcin. We're talking about, so Presencing Institute as a potential uh, leadership training model. We're, we're talking about leadership training, culture training, project management training. Uh, here we have a leadership development document we're working on. We're looking at page 7 or page 7 or page 8 now. We're looking at page 8. Um, Andreas, tell us, uh, continue going. And But before we go further, do we are we in agreement that we want to divide this so there's leadership, culture, project management? Uh, are we trying to wrap them into one? Do you want to expand this document? Or, or this is, let's just uh, let's talk about leadership here for now. Uh, or do we want to make the link to culture and project? Um, I think that projects and teams are quite closely together. And leadership and... Um, well, I think that leadership and culture are quite close together as well. Mm -hmm. um, so... Throw it in there. To kind of integrate it so we don't get too many, too yeah. many parts later when we deliver it. Excellent. Yes. Let's do that. So so tell us what you liked about the theory of you. Um, it's quite it's a very holistic approach. Most theories look more on either it can be uh, divided into relational, it can be into task oriented and it's um, so it's not so much about how what why we lead people or or what's the purpose of leadership? This one takes us through many different parts that are necessary for people to get an understanding of the world around us uh, and to bring that down into very concrete steps of how we can participate together and get the most out of the group. Uh, and when I looked into one of the books, when I got a bit interested to see if it suits you, mm -hmm. I saw that they mentioned uh, some example of future organizations and examples for the Linux Foundation and Wikipedia Foundation or movement. So it seems like they're already on a similar mm -hmm. level. So Excellent. Maybe, maybe somehow it's possible to get some kind of collaboration where oh. where we can use their their uh, models and maybe also tell them how it applies. And there we also have already a network of people who are interested in these type of ways of thinking. So mm -hmm. maybe it's also source for you to get uh, potential leaders so people who want to practice. very nice very nice okay um, how do we want to proceed on that's we should pursue that uh, let's find out more about it um, and probably end up talking to them as a result of this conversation so keep going mm -hmm. so on the web page you can uh, already look around a bit and they have many tools which they uh, let out for a some, many of their tools there is uh, open source uh, mm -hmm. and they also mm -hmm. have um, I have linked a couple of books in the uh, systemic solution in the U process there's the theory of use the first model leadership theory and then if you're more interested in how it relates to uh, the economy ego to ecosystem it's, it's another book there. Uh, so um, it's, it's Ed Shine yeah. is, uh, is Otto who are the fellows? Otto Scharmer is the Presencing Institute? Uh, Otto Scharmer is uh, one of the authors for um, the book. I don't know if what's his relation. Yeah, he's also uh, mentioned mm -hmm. on the Presencing Institute webpage uh, at the bottom. And Ed Shine? That's the. Um, Thought leader Ed Shine is the uh, thought leader behind this. Ed, sorry. So Ed Shine interviewed by Otto Scharmer. Ed Shine is, um, I mean, the author of the uh, this youth theory U. Mm -hmm. That's that's Ed Shine. Okay, that's that's possible. Let's see. Um, don't I have it? Yeah, I'm just curious uh, who are the people we need to be talking to and basically, um, yeah, what their community is like, who are the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. Um, 
Jonathan, do you have any feedback? Uh, yes, uh, definitely goes into some things in sharing about uh, sociocracy and dynamic governance, which kind of, I would say, dovetails to some degree. Um, something that definitely to share with Andreas about Dinah Lee Christensen about her sharing with sociocracy and dyna dynamic governance, which mm -hmm. may be able to have a similar thought process just presented a different way. So it's interesting to see how this uh, cross pollination would work with uh, between the two. We're joining the. Um... Mm -hmm. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Um. Okay. Because I mean, essentially, the theory you proposed the quality results. You know, are affected by any kind of social systems a function of quality awareness, attention, and consciousness that participants in the system operate from. So it seems like it's it's definitely stemming from some of the similar types of thinking, um, just in a different presentation and framework, which I think is really great. Um, identifying blind spots, I think, are a huge part. So. Mhm. Mm Interesting to see how the. Uh, how, how different the process is. It seems like this has, has a little bit more of a grant, I wouldn't say grant, but more of a, a, a identified process specifically. Yeah, excellent. Uh, what, was abstract, you know? Yeah, yeah. We have to look at the specific tools that are offered and how they apply to, to OSC. What's the, Andreas, any comments yet on the other leadership systems uh, or or uh, frameworks framework what, what are they leadership frameworks like spiral dynamics okay yeah, intrinsic um, extrinsic I value hierarchy mm -hmm. yep. yeah, this one's the um, in the next slide is from the uh, document from Dan mm -hmm. um, spoke about spiral dynamics and intrinsic extrinsic value hierarchy mm -hmm. Yep. An ecology of, of the mind. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to spiral dynamics, I've heard this theory before, um, especially when it comes to more society and the development of society. Uh, it's not, I haven't seen it so much when it comes to, to leadership, so I don't know exactly how, how we can use it. Uh, yeah, besides, it's got a TM on the top of it. Junk it. Yeah, I, I added that one also. <laughs> <laughs> well, the theory of you, theory use, it's, it's a good start. No trademarks so far that we've yeah. seen. Yeah, but go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I think of the three that uh, that that he mentioned, the ecology of the mind might be um, one of the most interesting. Um, these three, I haven't seen them before, but I think. This one might be the one which is closest and most uh, useful. Intrinsic extrinsic value hierarchy? Uh, no, the ecology of the mind. Ecology and of the mind? philosophical, so I don't know how we can use it for, mm -hmm. for leadership. Uh, it's, it's a lot about values and a lot about you know, philosophical foundation. Uh huh, yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then we have the the ones which I originally thought about, which are useful and which are uh, well researched, uh, would be the seventh leadership, situational leadership, and leader member exchange. Um, seventh leadership is, is quite easy for people to find about, and you can also find books which combine seventh leadership with Scrum methodology, for example. And it's also something which which uh, mm -hmm. not only gives effective results, but it also uh, motivates people to to consider the greater society and to consider greater good. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of things to do with helping each other grow as individuals as, as well. Um, so it kind of sparks our altruistic motivation, mm -hmm. which I think is, is important for the long-term process. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you were just now you were talking about which which of the choices? So that's the servant leadership. Okay. Uh, uh, where, what slide is that? Uh, slide 7. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Slide. 
Um, so, like, it can be, you can use a combination of these mm-hmm. ones, uh, combination of servant leadership, yeah. situational leadership, and theory of you, for example. Um, because then people get some kind of orientation when they uh, start to lead team meetings, when they start to mm-hmm. have something to relate to, they have something to, which is quite, yeah. Good. some of them are practical, some of them are a, a bit, uh, something they can grow with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we can also, of course, reference best practices so that when there's questions about process, we can say, hey, no, that the, this process has been shown to work well like this for, so that we can ask, answer questions from experience, from others' experience, building upon others' experience, which definitely helps in a, in a free-thinking crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's also good yeah. to have some mm-hmm. issues from uh, like the situational. Maybe it's not the most well well proven theory, but it's something which most people have heard of, and it's, it's easy for new leaders to to look at it and, and realize that uh, the one the one they lead, they actually uh, they they need to grow and they need to get time to get into their new situation. So it's it's quite good for for new leaders to have that one. Uh, mm-hmm. Then leader member exchange. So it's, it's some basic things to to introduce and kind of have it as a toolkit, and then they can use the ones which which they feel most mm-hmm. attached. Well, we should, um, you know, we, so I think we should definitely be very specific about okay, here's the different things we have on a plate, and how do we? Uh, I think we should architect that since we know the requirements of the process most closely we should architect that and then of course have feedback but start with a solid foundation that we propose uh, that we bring to the table mm-hmm. okay uh, so in that case to, to bring us foundation I would take the um, well look into the fear of you mm-hmm. uh, but definitely add servant leadership situational leadership and leader member exchange and have that as our uh, initial proposal as uh, leadership um, well training basically mm-hmm. uh, so the six leadership theories um, those are kind of like the main or so the theory of you also I mean is there is there like many more other ones that we're not looking at or um, yeah I mean you can look at there are quite many others which um, yeah, there's quite a few out there. Yeah, quite, quite many. Mm-hmm. It, it really depends on what you want as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a similar one to some leadership, which is a bit less altruistic, transformational leadership theory, uh, which is uh, it's also quite powerful, uh, but then it's uh, the leader is very important. It's, it's very much in the center, so it depends mm-hmm. on what type of culture you want to build in your organization. Yeah. We want to build an empowerment culture. So the leader is there insofar as that helps people gain power. Yeah, that would be seventh leadership. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a distributive leadership model power distributive leadership model yeah mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah it's it's kind of also uh, meant to make like if you're the leader one of your job is to make the others leaders as well mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's, uh, leading leaders yep we got to build the leaders mm-hmm. so that's that's good that's uh, that sounds that resonates um, situational leadership what do we like about it Let's see, do we have any other slides on this, or let's see. Um, servant. Yeah, the seventh slide. Uh-huh. Okay. So you describe... So you kind of went into the detail of three of those? The servant, the situational, and the theory of you. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mhm. 
Okay. Um, uh, leader member exchange is also quite good. It's basically, um, I didn't write anything about that one, but it's, it's quite short. It's basically to invite people to the in-group. Um, that most of the time when you have groups, you tend to have the in-group and the out-group. Uh, so as a leader, one of your role, tasks is to make the uh, offer, leadership offer, to the people who don't speak to others and see if you can invite them in, in your daily conversation, uh, basically. Oh, well, we do that. So I guess we are borrowing from that leadership style. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there some seminal book on this topic or that's just, is there some references or? Yeah, I can get you some, some references. Uh, mm -hmm. There are, do you want the ori original ones or do you want the seminal work? Original? Like it's good. So, so forever we do he here, um, to make this sound, we should, we should, uh, expose what is the seminal book on a topic and perhaps mm -hmm. for, for current relevance, is there an institute or entity that's doing that right now? And do they resonate with us? And should we contact? I mean, I guess at, at best we can say, okay, so we're doing leadership development. If we want to borrow points from different, uh, these different theories, we should talk to the leaders of these movements and invite them into OSE as a, an advisory capacity, meaning one to two hours per month um, of discussion and advisory work. Mm -hmm such that we can nail down like if they're very helpful and they can nail us you know help us nail down some practices or adapt them specifically or get the you know the insights from the the people who have been doing this that's that's how we want to work we want to pretty much uh, open source this knowledge if it's if it's relevant to making an open source economy happen so mm -hmm. if we can connect it to our long-term goals then yes we should talk to them all right. Uh, I know the first two servant leadership and situational leadership. Mm -hmm. They both have some form of organizations. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure about leader member exchange if they have an institute or anything like that. But I, I can look it up. Okay. Uh, uh, do you have some kind of? Do you want their address or do you want me to contact them? And in that case, um, do you have some? Kind yeah. Of Let's um. Know? Let's keep discussing that. Like, first of all, the question would be what what we, we should come up with first. Like, what specifically do we need for them, from them? Like, if if we see, wow, we really resonate with this um, this leadership methodology. What do we have for research? I mean, first of all, we should read what's available and assess that, and then if we're informed, we should contact them. Not just like upfront, but you know, we should study their material a little bit, see what we want to expand on. And then we can have a meaningful conversation with them. Like we have, then we gain the authority to say, "Hey, we looked at your stuff. We want to go further." Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so what we should do here is keep, um, in terms of, um, yeah. I mean, what's the best, what, what, Jonathan? What's the best way to continue here? Or Andreas, if you have well, more, I mean, big, more to share. Or... I mean, the biggest. Thing... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the biggest now is, is a matter of application mm -hmm. and how can we use this right now in terms of where we need to go mm -hmm. in terms of execute. Um, I mean, having a leadership program uh, is going to be great in getting some very basic general content and, of course, doing an assessment, getting a needs analysis of where we are. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we're going to do is going to be very out of the box and uh, most of the conventional theories are going to have to be hacked to, to fit a hybrid virtual organization. So the theories are going to be great, but I think when it comes down to Application. We're, we're creating and breaking the ground. Mm -hmm. so, okay. I mean, that, that's what's going to come down to. Because a lot of this stuff is for different types of situations or even different organizations. And given that we're a, a highly engaged volunteer organization, you know, it's going to require, you know, a little bit unique uh, dispositions. So, uh, in terms of execution right now, we're looking at the groups that we already have. Yeah. And I think we should say, most, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, concerning what, who we have right now and what needs to be done in terms of a leadership rollout plan, uh, in terms of how many leaders we have, and of course your goal to have, what, 100 leaders full-time equivalent within a year? No, not 100 full-time leaders, 100 contributor full-time equivalent. So that probably would indicate 
10 liters. You know, yeah, 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 a, yeah, saying that, yeah. you know, 10, 20 maybe, but enough leadership that, that a group can exist and work effectively under each leader, with each leader. Right. The, the I mean, leader is the facilitator. I mean, it, it goes into establishing what are going to be our protocols in, in working in groups and teams and, and dealing with the virtual constraints mm -hmm. um, versus just face-to-face -face constraints. And, and when you're dealing with leadership development, it's one thing you do it over the phone. I mean, in person, it's another thing when you're doing it over, over a webinar. There's a lot of human dynamics that are missing out in mm -hmm. terms of face-to-face. So those are some of the considerations in looking at how we're going to approach leadership development in terms of, okay, are we going to have a retreat? Are we going to do, and that's where the collaborative literacy, I think is going to be a great part of that. Mm -hmm. And coming up for the rest of the year, we're going to have face-to-face -face eventually through workshops or just attending uh, just meetings that we're having or retreats or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's where you're going to have the most effective uh, times in terms of meaningful relationships and meaningful impact in developing cohesive relationships with each other. Mm -hmm. But in terms of quality and content and getting the methodology, or I'll just say the theory down, or at least the knowledge management down, I think this is great uh, to give people a basic knowledge of you know what we're kind of looking for, uh, what is our approach, mm -hmm. and how we uh, how are we going to train up other people. And, and getting this information is very necessary for the chapters and ambassadors so that there is some sort of example that they can follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so right now I think the relevant question is, so, Andreas, is, you're doing good work in doing this background research and then application. So, so let's say, what is, um, let's maybe focus on us. Okay, so if we have a leadership training program, um, let's say we do a, a first webinar to, for, I mean, we have to scope this out. What, what is the goal? We're talking about a team leader for, say, the aquaponics group or any other group. So we're saying, okay, here's what you need as far as the, the I mean, what we should be pro probably be writing is, is a curriculum for webinars. So maybe say, okay, web, webinar number one, this is what we cover. Now with Laura, we started going over that and, and maybe we should work from her document because there we already have some initial ideas that she was going to cover. So maybe let's pull up, pull up that document and build from that. What do you think, Jonathan? Yeah, I tried following the, the other that document. All I found was the uh, it was the critical path. No, that was the aquaponic stuff. So I think that may be on her yeah, log. But, yeah, but I posted it in the Google Hangout. It should be there. Uh, aquaponics technical uh, document there in its slide. 14 and 15, and I think she also has another document as well. Um, oh no, my window disappeared again. Um, I'm going to, okay, I'm trying to find the window again, hold on. Okay, I'll, I'll try to find her existing document or uh, our, our previous meetings. Well, yeah, and let's frame it within what Andreas is doing for his thesis. So, how does the current work relate to your thesis? So let's discuss that um, point. Will, yeah, um, I, this will be a bit in parallel to the thesis. Um, this will be more about the collaboration. Um, I'll try to use this as participative observation, so I still get some kind of insight of, of for example, when you how you do when you to choose to work with other organizations. Uh, so it's quite good actually that um, you talk now about how you you in, would engage in these, uh, let's say you're looking for subject matter experts, uh, mm -hmm. and if they come from other organizations, like uh, which ones do you engage with uh, and why you do like that. So it's quite, I get information about about this by, by helping you with this leadership development at the same time. Uh, but then I also have, if it's possible to, to get more, um, I'm looking 
see if I can get more interviews about collaboration and how people perceive collaboration uh, with other organizations and, and within the organizations from um, people that are curr currently volunteering for your organization. Mm -hmm. So I haven't changed the topic to will still be about collaboration, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, can you repost the link again? Finding uh, Laura's PowerPoint for the uh, last the actual leadership training. I'm trying to post that as well. There's the aquaponics. Uh, the aquaponics. Well, there was a slide. Slide. I think uh, we down to 14 is where or 15. We were looking at some of the different ways to. Actually, slide 16, but let me find the, the document that she sent specifically for leadership training, team leader PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can share that. Andreas, do you have a Gmail account? Uh, yep. Let's see. Um. putting those that document I looked at her log it's not on her log it's, it needs to be uploaded um, I pulled it from my email put it into the drive and just shared it now mm. okay so I'm gonna say I'll put it on her log so we can find it there next time You're uploading it right now? Right, I just, it should already be sent in an email. I can also share my screen as well, but um, see if I can find the direct link. It seems like it's in a, it's in a different format rather than a meeting in slides. Let me see if I can move it over to slides. Let's see if I, I should have that in my, should I not have that in my own team leader training? Okay, let's find that in my Google Docs here. screen just to give a quick look at it. Should be starting with learning objectives. Uh, okay, let's see, let's see. Hold on a second. I, I got a Okay. Hey, let me. Uh, I have that one in uh, Google Doc that's uh, editable, I believe. So let's see. Let me uh, share that. So let me. Uh, let me share that.
Let's see, we had another working doc where we looked at the cu curriculum. And um, for the different... Okay, yeah, I like it. I like what she's got there so far. That's pretty good. Um, here, let me paste it. Here's the link. That's a Google Doc that's editable. I'm going to put that in uh, onto her log. Yeah, she's got some pretty good, pretty good um, material that works. Uh huh. So that's pretty good. It's um, and I think what we can do is maybe. Okay, let me just reconcile this. There was a whole. Hold on a second. Let me just document it properly on the on the wiki. She had a curriculum of the different classes, class one, two, three, four, five. Do you know where that went? Uh, I'll take a look. Because I think what we need to do is, uh, and as we talked with her, we take the standard leadership training materials that apply to anybody and we refactor it for open culture, for, for collaborative literacy. Absolutely. Because that is not... Um, because collaborative literacy is not an explicit goal of the materials, of the approach. So we have to add that on to the, um, onto the existing standard content. So basically we start with industry standards, we, we uh, add open source content to the open source value. Um, We open it up essentially. Oh, it's actually on the wiki already. Did oh man, it's already there. So here, let me uh, put. What what date is that? Is that um... here? There's a page like that already. I'm just gonna. I link that. Yeah, okay. we already have this on the wiki. Uh, we forgot to put it on her log. Or she didn't. She's not uh, following. Collaborative literacy. <laughs> She's not logging. <laughs> yeah. Um, and these little points, like what we're... Sorry, just to make a point. I mean, this is exactly what we're talking about. This is the difference of, you know, like us scrambling around, looking for things versus the culture being clear. And it's like, bam, you just, you know where to find everything. Because everyone's got that in their mindset that you're not working on this alone. And that's a per pervasive mindset that we need to inculcate to all the people working with us. So we just facilitate progress. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and definitely a medium for, for doing that is, is, you know, definitely having a, a community aspect where people can know who's, who's doing what. And I think that, you know, mm -hmm. we should see that emerge soon. Yeah, yeah, this is, it's coming. It's it's going to be a great accomplishment. Because, um, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what Wikipedia does or Linux or whatever. I don't know. I mean, we should study more of that, but I think we're, we're coming up with approaches that are, um, that have aspects of openness that are, I mean, I just haven't seen some of them in any other place that, that exists. So, but we want to learn learn the standards that Wiki, Wikimedia Foundation has, Linux Foundation, uh, also Eclipse Con, Eclipse Foundation. There's a few leaders in the field that we need to learn all that they do. And we can bring in Ben Kabe. He's the community manager for Eclipse Foundation. We can bring him into the table to help us. Oh, yeah, I think we should actually bring him in on this when we develop the leadership training because we got to start with what are the the standard procedures for an open project for an open platform what are the standard things you need to provide to your community right so that's how we can uh, yeah well currently the I mean, for execution right now we have the different events coming up this year uh -huh. um one of the most i guess pressing things are going to be just what we have in terms of the critical path for scheduling for the year which is going to be the uh, Part of the big product is going to be the micro tractor, uh, as well as even the, the workshops and the agricultural workshops. But prioritization on getting uh, 
some leadership there, developing there for Palm mm-hmm. um, and some of the working groups for the microtractor, and mm-hmm. then of course the graphics working group as well. Mm-hmm. What other uh, do we have? Well, I would say James. Know? James, on, I mean, with? James has been doing a lot of work on the microtractor and bulldozer. I mean, we gotta. Uh, consider him. There's this other fellow that just uh, recently contacted me. We don't have a track record with him, but there's another person. There's who else is rife? I think um, an aquaponics group. I mean, I'm going to try to pull in this this new guy that came about. Um, how about Andreas? As far as um, we should actually consider what Andreas' role would be. Andreas, how do you see yourself being involved in this project in the future? I mean, would you be interested in in uh, continuing the development work on on leadership? Because that's, I mean, that's a field in itself. Uh, within open source ecology, you know. Yeah, being you know uh, being yeah. a like a team leader for helping helping train team leaders. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm. And basically, what I'm at right now is uh, is I'm finishing the master's program after this. And mm-hmm. um, I mean, the end goal is to, to for me, so you will know basically yeah. my my uh, well what what my values are and my motivation can be quite good to know that uh, I intend to build a uh, similar community here in Sweden, uh, and it's uh, I want to have a community where different. Uh, forms of open source uh, development can be in one place and uh, where different type of organizations who work under the same values, under the same open source values, can work kind of under one roof. So oh, yeah? um, uh, it would be, for example, that, that one part could be uh, open source development in some of the buildings and some other buildings might be, let's say, uh, Linux development and some other buildings would be some other developments. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of my goal. So whatever, if I can help you in somehow when it comes to leadership development, uh, then I'm in for the long term. So wherever oh, very nice. you think that that's, you need me at the moment. Uh, Excellent. Well, this is really good. Uh, so do you wanna do you wanna run this under the the OSC brand as in a cha- OSC chapter, or or do you wanna be independent, or? So basically, I'll see if I have picture but um, it will be um, everything it, it's not under one branch or under one organizations but more mm-hmm. to see if it's possible to bring uh, different organizations under one mm-hmm. community uh, so it could be that the okay. source ecology it's one of these communities uh, as long oh, as be... development within this field is needed oh wow that's a, that's a good way so you 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 even uh, yeah kind of like broader vision in some way um is this intended to be a land-based facility a campus yes. yeah so we'll have talks now on saturday with uh, potential stakeholders to see if we can get some some land here uh, what what scale are you looking at for for the size of the facility uh well it's it depends really on on what's needed like i saw that mm-hmm. uh, it's quite hard because uh, I don't know how much land is needed. I saw some of your calculations. You had mm-hmm. what was it, forty acres for two hundred people. Yeah, we're gonna. Um, so here, what we're gonna try to do is thirty acres, one hundred fifty people as the as the capacity of a highly functional autonomous settlement, or basically a model, you know, model city or such, model village. But that's that's our current view in terms of Dunbar's number. Which is 150, and uh, the monkey sphere, so-called. <laughs> See that on Facebook, and um, enough uh, fertility and natural resource, moisture, enough rock and s- soil that you can feed the population, provide energy, provide natural resources. So um, actually, you might want to get a taste of this. So so we're actually uh, beginning to announce the plans for next year's August 2016. I mentioned that. I don't think you might have heard that yet, but but next August 2016, we're we're gonna focus around the micro house, greenhouse, radical build, and machinery build, where 
we're showing that we can build the housing from our bricks, our lumber. We're actually considering if we can get rock from underneath uh, mm -hmm. for like foundations. And also by that time be melting metal plastic and uh, mm -hmm. so that we can make glazing as well as rebar as well as um, like plastic extrusion for plumbing and 3D printing for other parts. So basically really try to max out the GVCS tools for building and running this integrated house greenhouse. So you've got food and energy production definitely. Uh, but basically a big 30 day event where we bring about 100 people to factory farm and uh, have a really ambitious build out. So we're gonna focus on getting all the tools ready for that. Uh, after this year, in October, mid-October, I'd like to pretty much transition fully to planning out that event. Right now, of course, we're getting ancillary tools for that event. But that might get you, uh, if you're serious in pursuing the, the land-based facility, the, the, land, the land requirement question is always a big one. But I think the bottom line, it's got to be kind of like a long-term perspective where, where in many places you're going to have to rebuild, regenerate. Like at our place, the our agriculture here could hardly support any people right now. <laughs> but uh, when you get the earthworks and water retention and fertility back up, I don't think we're going to have any problem with thriving with 150 people from, from local resources. Right now, we maybe can do like maybe 30 <laughs> at the present capacity. We really need to improve the f full biological and ecological life here and of course develop machines and infrastructures but yeah um but for the for our case we we typically talk about a, a standard farm scale of 40 acres if we talk about a village uh village model so we're going to try to do that at factory farm as far as with it so that's the goal for for within 10 years to see whether a full osc campus can be built like that as a first step to potentially viral replication worldwide. So we'd like to build a couple of these facilities and just to make sure that they're replicable. And then pretty much because the plans are open, we'll, cont we'll continue training people in immersion programs and let this go viral because it's all going to be radically open source. All the blueprints are zero barrier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this 150, that's, that's the limit for how many people we can have in our head? Well, um, I think we're shooting for Dunbar's number as a limit of people who can know themselves face to face. So you you have a personal relationship with people. So that's just a basic design principle we're following right now for yeah. village scale. Um, I think virtual community. Right, that's just a physical community. The virtual, right, yeah. of course, is larger. Um, I would say that just basic survive, you know, kind of like productivity figures. I think per acre. And I mean, especially depends how you you do it. But I mean, with um, depending on how you do agriculture, you can feed a, a varying number of people. Like for example, aquaponics is going to be very much, much more intense production. But we can we can think of like a, about a thousand square feet producing all the agriculture. Actually, per person, it would actually turn out to be in our model with aquaponics greenhouse. We're actually considering. 250 square feet per person from aquaponics to feed a pretty much a full diet. So if we extend it to the acre scale or hectare scale, we're talking about um, there's 40,000. Um, let's see, 40 times four. Uh, you're actually talking about 160 people per acre being fully supported using aquaponics for food production. So so the theoretical limits of sustainability on a parcel of land. Are actually probably several fa factor of several higher than the 150, probably like a like a factor of 10 for for actually even prospering. But we want to keep it very resilient, so we don't run into. So 150, I think, is a very resilient number that can sustain itself without ever pressing the limits of the system. So that's how we're looking at it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, because I guess with aquaponics and it can go vertical as well, so uh, yeah, yeah. of course it will have higher energy requirements. Um, uh, depends how you do it, I mean, not necessarily depends how you do it, once again okay. it's about design. 
So actually, right now we're looking at very low energy systems uh, in order to make that happen. But yeah, uh, what I was considering was just the food. The max limit would be 160 for food, but then of course you've got f uh, fuel fuel needs. So it depends how how much you want to be traveling. The energy needs I think are pretty clear. That's that you don't need so much area for. Um, but heating and and energy, like energy for travel, like depending how much you want to travel, would be a big deal, perhaps. But okay. But these are just kind of like some round figures where we stand at 150 people for 30 acres should be a an, a great example of prosperity without hitting limits. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm uh, it sounds good so far. I've been thinking about like um, small numbers uh, at first. Um, but still, like yeah. the goal would be around uh, in the end to be able to support about fifty people. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then if if we have like if aquaponics develops to, and we actually manage to do that in a long term way and not uh, having to rely on buying um, food pellets for the fish and fish mm -hmm. and so forth, then we might be able to get that number up. But to start with the, about 50 people uh, and get some permaculture up to uh, to feed these ones and uh, so, well, something similar. So I think it would be, be possible to do something, maybe a small replication of what you want to do uh, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and trying it also. And it's quite, there, you have quite many resources here because we have uh, a huge university with um, around 8,000 students and uh, you have many engineer students as well. Mm -hmm. so Where are you located? Uh, close to Lund. Um, mm -hmm. And it's Lund uh, University? Yeah, Lund University. So um, there's quite quite good place to set up a uh, this type of facility because uh, you have a lot of people who are engaged in, in uh, several projects and Trying to get them engaged also might might give them the experience, but also give the open source development a push once the uh, facilities are up and running. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing, actually, if it's possible. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's kind of it's kind of a dream I'm working towards. But that's Excellent. Almost, that's, what I'm that's not even so far from Stockholm. Well, <laughs> in American terms, I guess no. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Yeah. Uh huh. Very nice. So uh, we should probably involve you because we're looking at we're developing some cha chapter standards. So we'll get you in on that conversation because we want to find out for our stakeholders what are the needs of our chapters people. How do, does OSC support them, and how and how do the chapters move the movement forward? That's good too. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good also to see to relate to someone who won't only be pure uh, open source ecology. If, yeah. So we get some early experience and like be able to solve this issue before you have maybe five people who wants to do it and you know so it's, it's yeah open nice. yeah good good okay so um, in the meantime so let's talk about back on the leadership thing so so how should we proceed quickly, here uh, yeah I was looking at the slide too I just made a few notes uh, kind of our goals if we're having. 100 full-time equivalent collaborators, we're going to need anywhere from 10 to 20 people in terms of leaders. Mm -hmm. So, ideally, where's that? Training where, are you, so where are you putting your stuff? Leadership development uh, slide number two. Okay. Hmm. Just, uh, I mean, the uh, last two bullet points, just our goals in terms of. Yeah. You know, if, if we're going to have a hundred equivalent collaborators, I mean, we're going to need anywhere from ten to twenty leaders, which would give us kind of a ideal what we need to get get formed. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So, setting a training date would be ideal, but obviously that's going to require for us having a general curriculum. Yeah. So the uh, curriculum we should be. Um, I think that's what we should be talking about. So, yeah, excellent, excellent. I mean, that's good to quantify the specific goals for about March. Um, March 2016, about a year from now, um, end of March, let's say, or beginning of March, maybe, um, around March of 2016. So, I think we can I mean, build. That, that number is not too difficult to do. I mean, in terms of, I mean, in terms of getting the material and getting people trained and, and 
getting just a level and a layer of, of, of exposure to the content and then, even, and then practice. So. Will they have some on site training as well? Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, for now, okay, that we don't have anything on a schedule obviously right now, but I think we can consider perhaps a retreat, leadership, leadership retreat, maybe like mm -hmm. March yep. or February or something, skiing in Colorado or something like that. Um, <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so develop Laura's document, integrate uh, Andreas. Uh, document. Uh, what's this? So I'm on page two of Andrea's document. Integrating this document into Laura's and refactor towards collaborative li literacy. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, do we find the, those other documents, the different lessons? Where I just forget where that was. The lessons, lesson plan. There were like five lessons that she was talking. Uh, if we can find that, then we'd be complete. Oh wow, that's uh, so in Lund. You're just uh, you're just right next door to my home country. There, I can we can go in on uh, fruit expeditions. We're planning a fruit expedition potentially in like a. Because I've got a lot of interesting fruit in Poland for perennial polyculture. Uh -huh. uh, we might end up there. It's right right next door. Next door neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Are you from Basava? Uh, I'm from Poznań. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Let's see, that's like a you know, it's like a road trip across Missouri. <laughs> Except you got an ocean there. Yeah. A little yeah. Baltic Sea. There's a bridge. There's a bridge. Yeah. Okay. Um Some team leader training. Is the team leader training you're looking at? Yeah. So there's the Here, yeah, yeah, actually, sorry. That's fine. <laughs> um, let's see, I think I started a wiki page called Collaborative Literacy. Let's see. Yeah, um, So far, it seems quite mm -hmm. um, something maybe that you want to look into and see if you think that it's yes, if it suits you. Um. Andreas, is there any um, are there any organizations that have adopted some of their principles and some of their methodologies? That is a good question. It's quite new methodology, so I don't think right, there's right. so much substance uh, when it comes to it. Uh, okay, maybe. I mean, that's the same thing we had with the uh, sociocracy and the dynamic governance. I mean, you had a small group of people and organizations that had it, but those who did saw significant results. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of uh, governance and uh, being able to find the balance between the individual and the group, and uh, you know, keeping the minority from being a uh, from leveraging their power in, in stopping the, the, the decision-making process to even a consensus getting in the group think so. 
the uh, sociocracy and even the theory of use seems very interesting because it's really pressing the envelope of, of social networks or social frameworks and in the decision making process where you have certain people that you know delay the progress and when we're doing concurrent engineering and the designing that uh, you know you have many meta processes going and you have one individual a few individuals that bottleneck that uh, that you know causes a huge problem in, in, in you know implementation and outcomes of manufacturing and even getting the product uh, finished. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. What are some of your What are your, some of your needs in terms of for us in terms of your paper or your research? What uh, What What things can help us to help you fulfill what you need? Uh, when it comes to my paper, uh, really, it's it's quite. Um, uh, I need, or it would be very useful with with interviews from. I would it would be nice to have some more interviews from from you, Jonathan. Uh, okay. If, if, if you have time for that. Um, no, I, I do. I just have been very, very busy. I've been, yeah. you know, it's still, still recovering, and I, I got your Facebook message. I just, uh, I've got a whole list of people I need to respond to just because I've been uh, out, out of commission for the last couple of weeks. Yes, of course. So, um, yes. but, um, but definitely want to, uh, you know, fulfill whatever whatever things you need from me and, and, and get you going on what you need to do. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about you, Marcin. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess you have quite a lot of things to do. Um, if you would have time to to with maybe one talk. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, how much time? Like, uh, how much time do you need? Um, about an hour, if that's possible. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Um, so. Let's see. So, what are our next steps? So, maybe should we continue this meeting, same time next week? And um, maybe if you want to just set up the, see, I can look at my my calendar right now. Um, if you want to do something like uh, Monday at would one p.m. one p.m. work for you on Monday, one p.m. CST. Probably six hours later. Yeah, I can say preliminary. Yes, I just have to, have to check my calendar isn't here. I yeah, still okay. have one of those physical ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's great. Thank you. Yeah, uh, just confirm that if that works for you. Yeah. Yep. And um, it sounds good. Um, okay. Excellent. So really quickly, uh, uh-huh. so some of our goals is going to be one, I guess, getting a training curriculum, and then uh, mm-hmm. the next step would be setting a first training date, uh, which would of course include getting a list of participants. So I didn't know whatever you know mm-hmm. what other things you want to yeah when we want to have our first, uh, training whatever. Yeah, I would shoot for. Oh, yeah. I think we should probably shoot for two weeks from now. I mean, not not yet, but I mean, let's see. If we develop some of this, uh, that means we work. Yeah, I mean, we can, if Laura's back on track, I mean, basically starting from her document and the collaborative literacy, I think we, we should do is, uh, I mean, the collaborative literacy is very high on my agenda right now because I, I, I simply became really aware of how that's been um, a bottleneck, actually. So... I think I can prepare that relatively quickly, like in a week or so. It's basically right. saying, okay, here's our culture, how we actually, you know, whenever we do a Google Doc or this or that, when we talk to each other, this is how we operate because people are just not clear about yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, SOPs. Yeah. Standard operating procedures, protocols or whatever uh, we want to roll. Yeah, yeah, literally like collaborative literacy SOPs uh-huh. yeah um, assessments we should also come up with how do you assess that a person got it right well I mean there's that it goes into like just general material and it goes into how you want to look into theory versus application so um, it could be one we give the you know a third you know the theory and then the two-thirds uh, application which, you know, you're not spending so much trying to 
so in the training in the training so in the webinar we can focus maybe like what 20 minutes theory and and the rest is practice with the people Most people are going to want, to want to learn through application anyway, but it also goes into what the curriculum is going to look like to determine what they're actually going to be doing. Um, uh -huh. And it just depends on how granular or what, what specifically we're looking for. So, I mean, and that's a kind of a wide scope. I mean, that's a huge scope, but narrowing it down to what we want to accomplish, like you said, the collaborative literacy, I think is going to be where we're looking for more competencies and drilling down to those core competencies of that is tools, the ability to you know communicate and to, to be consistent so standards and scope scope means um, first of all anyone who's a collaborator but then then also bring in how that how that relates to chapters and potential collaborators uh, yep. like for example the gold mine in Peru who wants to use a tractor um, and then there's, let's see, there's, um, what else was there on the scope thing? Chapters, potential collaborator. So I'll think about that. I forgot my train of thought here. Okay. But to what extent do we push that with, um, how is that built into our process? Like, who, who has to follow? Because obviously, people who are outside the organization, we don't have to bring them in unless we know that they're going to be a close collaborator. But so, oh, yeah, there's the third realm of um, just encouraging the forking, actually. See, forking, forking, and, and pull requests actually so, so this is th what I mean by that is um, we want to actively encourage those those people who are working on things but maybe they don't either we don't have the energy or the topic is just different we encourage them to say okay take our collaboration standards just take the template and then come back to our wiki oh. with documenting stuff and then if okay. if there's a toolkit basically right yeah. yeah yeah and if if someone wants someone's like hey i've got this crazy project out there but you know it's not osc machines but it actually like it's highly relevant to osc and it's it's uh, it's got pieces that we like we encourage them to come to our platform or we just encourage them to document it if it's not documented. So we encourage, um, I don't know, pull requests is, is part of it, but the other part is uh, simply the concept of encouraging documentation of other, other projects, other related projects, because right now we're missing out on a whole bunch of stuff. Like right now I haven't really been encouraging others to say, hey, look, you, we got these resources document your stuff at our place here's the tools so we need to right. generate that toolkit because we're missing out a lot of contributions that are relevant actually other related co you know, contributions yeah so basically as you said toolkit you know creating a funnel and a pipeline you know creating the funnel to get people to put their their data into the pipeline so that we yeah. can have that connection stored somewhere which yeah, which which yeah. refers to, I mean, not everyone wants to do it, right? Because most people are just not interested in, in any useful source documentation. But there are those who are very open to it. And for those that are, we we have to create a space for it. That's been a gap that I noticed that we haven't. I mean, initially, I tried to encourage people to do it. But then when, you know, things, you know, grew and things, I just said, hey, we, you know, we're too disorganized to allow that even to happen. But now I think we really need to pay attention to that actually happening. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the one of the ways to solve that is just get, you know you getting in front of the mic and, and just you can talk over yeah. certain topics. Yeah. And you have a dialogue about it to where people just get it. I mean, whether yeah. you like the news kit or just have an interview 
kind of back and forth in that sense to where, you know, let's talk about useful source. What is that? Mm-hmm. Why is it different, different? How is that different from use, inspirational source? And, you know, what kind of communities do we find that in? Mm-hmm. You know, why aren't we seeing open source going rapidly as, as we would like it to? And, that, and again, that's going to be some of the dialogue that goes along with it. It's going to open people's minds to saying, okay, this is why it's not working. Yeah. Uh, why is documentation so important? You know, documentation is absolutely critical to harnessing open source uh, capacity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. and if we don't have capacity because we don't have a framework that is like, adopted by the, you know, by the crowds yet. And, uh, you know, I think that's, we're getting there, of course, but uh, you as a thought leader and even as the, the pioneer for this for this movement, I think that's where, you know, your, your, your personality, your face, and even uh, your voice being able to, to pave the way, that's going to be very key to people adopting it. Uh, mm-hmm. And at the same time, you know, I think we should probably stay away from some of the detractors who, you know, just have just the ignorance in, in, in general and, and look at the people that are really, you know, understand and get it. Absolutely, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got a core crew of people that we can culture I mean, our policy has always been we don't worry about the naysayers, right? There's too many people that actually want to do it and want to yeah. contribute. Yeah, naturally. Mm-hmm. So it's it's going to yeah, be a you know, uh, it's consistent with some of our core positioning, which is um, absolute creative approach, right? Yeah, and, and also too, you know, relaying to other people and other leaders that hey, look, just because. You know, we, we don't agree that we're not we don't have to convince them we're going to let our like you said the product kind of speak for itself and even the methodology right. speak for itself in terms of uh, productivity and performance right I, I think getting to that place where our performance not only outperforms other methods but it really you know it blows their mind in the sense of it yep. kind of goes to the grain yeah yeah and that's something we have not really seen much of anywhere you know um, this what we're discussing right now it's just such a frontier to be tapped and you know everyone else is talking about whatever the anything uh, just just about any new discussion you hear about there it's implicitly concentrative and still in an old paradigm so there's not a lot of I don't think there's particularly a lot of innovation going on in uh, collaborative literacy really you know there's a just a little bit, just just so marginal. Mm-hmm. I'm really interested. Yeah, I'm really interested to hear of you and how that that's gonna, how that we can implement that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andres, you were saying something, or? Yeah, um, I'm thinking like in these first introductions, it's it's very good. You have um, quite a lot of uh, information of exactly how how they do things and so forth. I was thinking a little bit that it might be good for new um, or people who are interested in in learning some leadership skills and maybe take some more active part in those things to know exactly what it is that um, uh, that you expect from them and also what what kind of decisions they can make uh, when it comes to to questions like how much because the more decisions yeah basically so they know their role and and how they will relate to to open source ecology so they don't need to feel uncertain about um, what, what's on yeah. their plate and like oh, yeah. what they can decide about. Yeah. Raw ambiguity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And this goes into, so so it's kind of several things coming together, but I think the, the method that we're migrating to is the, the open source consortium concept where we bring in leaders around the table to spawn projects that then become uh, that start to go on, a, on on their own. Of course, the governance there is tricky because how do you bring a bunch of leaders? Like, who owns it, right? Up front, who owns that? I mean, who's the real owner if we're inviting people to a consortium, to an open consortium? And I think the 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 answer is is clear if we position that as, hey, we've got these this this collaborative literacy, this this open process that we're interested. We develop the capacity. To run an open process in this consortium and we let it go from there right so the ownership is uh, we're just pretty much I guess using the words we learned today and um, leader exchange was it um, member exchange where 
people coming in well first of all people are brought into the table to take leadership but but the power conflict comes from okay what what happens when scarce resources are now on a table like okay we um like who's gonna be you know whatever gain the fame or whatever power from this well no we're it's not about us gaining power the the core principle is it's a distributive process we, we set up a process whereby power can be distributed and that i think that principle no i think is a strong one to go on in terms of governance like how do you how do you get people to agree to what the fruit is and then the people have to agree to the fruit is if you have the open plans then that's that's the power that they have to understand the distributive economic model so so within um, basically within the consortium open consortium i guess we need to train the people up front about what this distributive power collaborative literacy is i mean the collaborative li literacy needs to include the the distributive economic goals at the core of that for people to to do it because we actually ran into some issues with it already on people who we thought were absolutely uh absolutely go it turned out you know they ne didn't necessarily subscribe to the distributive economic model you know so so that that clarity is paramount but i think it when we have that clarity the governance becomes um clear so yeah but i think it's very important to, to actually uh, make that point uh, as clear as possible for mm -hmm. people um, but mm -hmm. even when you do that it's um, also with some practical like example of what it means because it's still you probably will still get some uncertainty at, at least in the start mm -hmm. uh, and the more clear it becomes the less the more free your time would be from having to answer unnecessary questions about exactly oh, good what point. it is about. so how do we imp how do we get the clarity what are your suggestions for how to do that? Well, you, I mean, you can try, uh, like, you can do it in, in iterations, basically, and see what type of questions you get. Uh, like, you do it as clear as possible. You can uh, play it up for some people and see if they have any questions. And then, and then you will probably notice if you always get the same question over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can update it and, okay, they didn't understand that they are actually able to make the choice of whether or not they should um, uh, build this thing instead. Okay, so the that can be an example. Okay, basically. so the process learning, the, the learning organizational model here, how do we build in some elements of knowledge capture and feedback to, to, to improve this constantly? Uh, so oh, we have to yes. think, so we have to, um, mm -hmm. learning organization infrastructure what what mechanisms are we putting in for capturing the feedback and all that I mean first thing comes to my mind is discuss or just dis, discuss uh, upvoted uh, discussion below any on any platform if it's on the wiki or I mean also just various ways to capture surveys just just little feedback forms um, or just listening and setting up space in the process to for explicitly for feedback, uh, I don't know, various things. Yeah. But yeah, definitely I need to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. I think within your open project management framework, you, there should be some kind of reflection always in the end, like lessons learned, so that it is an integrated part of your project yeah. that you always uh, look through. Uh, not only if you reach the goals, but also about the projects and, and base about these systems so we get both single and double loop learning both for the teams and also for the organization and I think in a broader sense there's a quarterly review that we're starting but um, have you seen that document by the way uh, I saw that something about the people who some people will get mailed that documents well it's um, Let me just send you that link. You should actually take a look at this because I'm. Um, so this document in a text box. Um, I'm gonna also link that. That's actually a document that's I, I claim is reviewable and. Uh, I haven't published that on a Facebook or anything yet, but I should do that. Um, but yeah, take a look at that. That's useful. Um, I linked that there too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So learning organization. Okay. So we'll we'll prepare the materials. We'll set a first training date as early as two weeks from now. 
that would be just about time. I mean, yeah, I mean, let's really shoot for like two weeks from now. First webinar. Right. Uh, I guess we have a running list of leaders already somewhere. I know they've seen mm -hmm. that. Um, I guess we can just re mm -hmm. recalculate that list. Mm -hmm. We didn't uh, find Laura's uh, Jonathan, uh, curriculum. Sorry? Uh, Jonathan, yeah, some, Laura, yeah, Laura's curriculum somewhere. I, I remember seeing that, or one of our objectives was to get a list of leaders which we could have. Um, so I think there's, there's two different segments there, leadership in terms of the organization, and then, of course, facilitators, leadership facilitation, being a facilitator, which I think is the second ancillary leg to that to where people that want to be involved in a project can actually you know, take on that training, uh, even as a function for them to, to, to be engaged at some level. But uh, I think that's an essential function. Yep. Especially a lot of permaculture, agricultural groups, you know, that's one of the weaknesses that they have, and that's a service we can provide for them. Granted, that, you know, in exchange, we uh, are able to get a lot of work done microtasking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. Anything else? Anything else, Andreas? But, um, yeah, I was thinking like who. Um, so uh, you're gonna develop some kind of curriculum. Uh, I was wondering for the next week, the um, uh, what role does um, she, uh, the other girl? Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So Laura, she is. Um, she's a professional. She's a professional con business consultant person. Who's helping us and um, so she was drawing up the actual curriculum which which the concept was like for example the thing that's linked in this document Laura's document yeah. uh, that was the first one there were like four or six that we proposed I was gonna take a look at that and pretty much refactor it for collaborative literacy just really the OSC slant on it wherever possible mm -hmm. and we use that as the course material so mm -hmm. That's what we were thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, can follow up with her. We'll include you on that. We can follow up with her to see what what happened today and what her goals are in, in terms of generating more of this training material, webinar material. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Um, and yourself, maybe if um, task for you could be something like. Maybe contact the just just to research and feed us with more direct feedback on how theory theory you can help us or mm -hmm. um, like also I don't know how much because it's really also depending on uh, on what you want so for example when it comes to project management it, it's really which, which type of projects you have if you really have agile projects and these type of things. Um, so the risk is that you put up a curriculum and you give um, training methodology for, uh, let's say, agile projects uh, without first making sure that you actually do have agile projects. Um, and also looking at what, what type of uncertainties you have to see, basically to see what, what the curriculum would need to, to include. Um, I mean, maybe you've already done that with, with Laura. Um, but, but for example, like what type of uncertainties are there in the project? If it's uncertainties about the um, the, the goal, or do you always know what the goal is? Then that mm -hmm. might need some extra skills in sense making, for example, for the ones who will lead the projects. If if they also have to deal with uncertain goals, uh, so it would be good to have to have a few people who actually look through the different parts of your organization and, and can, can discuss them to make sure that you get the right, right training. Uh, but well, maybe think, you've already done that with her. No, I'm, we haven't, but that's, that's the concept I think we're pursuing is, is that we take her material and adapt it to the specific case of OSC like, and say, you know, say can give case examples okay this is how this applies in the aquaponics this is on the micro tractor the graphics working group uh, so uh -huh. so I think that's where we're at right now we are we're taking the the materials 
and refactoring it for the OSC case, you, uh -huh. be, uh, focusing on uh, typical needs of OSC in terms of, yeah, um, yeah, the, the specific condition for OSC. But you're right, it's like if we don't know, we have to be clear about what are our challenges in the projects. Is it that we don't know the goal or, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. I think I think bottleneck has been the development method, and I think that's like the foundational thing that you know separates what we do from others is that we're we're documenting this process and making it very granular. So and it's a very much of a hybrid process. Right. Sorry, um, you what was the two things you documented and you? Well, the the, the development method itself is is. One, we break everything to a very granular level to allow for people to engage, uh, you know, in doing these micro tasks, um, and then creating a, a framework or a funnel to to get people into that framework and to, to follow the protocols is part of our challenges. But that, that that's just goes with communication and collaboration literacy. So, yeah, it's really it's like really. I mean, I gotta basically spill it, you know, like uh, based on Laura's documents, start refactoring it. Jonathan, maybe you can also start refactoring. That, but it's really taking the experiences and challenges that we had so far, and when we teach these skills, we focus on addressing the the gaps that we have already seen. Yeah, where I mean, eventually, like as you get familiar with our process here, you can help us, but you'd have to start getting involved in a different actual working. So like right now, we're talking about training you'd also have to see the actual process of how a, a particular project goes forward so it would be good for you to if you want to get start drawing up these documents with us you want to get involved in some other group that we have if you I don't know if you have the time but but um, and, but right now it's definitely useful to um, based on what you know to start trying to refactor these techniques for the issues that you see right I think mm -hmm. I think you can keep adding value to this uh, leadership development document. Definitely. Um, I mean, maybe that that would be. Maybe that's our fr maybe. I mean, we can task you with. Okay, these are leadership frameworks. Um, here's how it applies to OSC, right? So so, that's why I put OSC leadership development on that instead of leadership development on a mm -hmm. title page. Um, so. Because we want to take this document and say, okay, this is the various industry standards that are already there, and we're adapting it to the particular issues that we see. And you know, you know, you know, just a little bit. You 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 know, you're learning about what we're doing, so you can start doing some form of adaptation already, right? Mm -hmm. Which you are. So that's that's good. Maybe continue working on that what you can, in terms of sniffing out the relevant elements from all these techniques, you know. Mm -hmm. And maybe saying, like taking, you know, what you wrote, instead of, like, just to give you an example, slide number, um, like, six, seven, take six and seven, and you can say, add another column that says OSC case. How is it, how is it relevant to OSC? So basically, okay, in OSC, we typically run into, our approach is this and that. This is why this system is relevant, you know. So just really start translating all these, because I think there's going to be a little bit, like you know, for any one of these, we can say, oh, oh, but there's this one process that we really do as well, and we like the concept of mashup. Mashup is critical to our operating procedures. We take industry standards and mash them up in ways that have it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we can go through each of these and maybe add more and we say, okay, so this is the elements, this is how it relates to OSC, these are the OSC challenges, this is why this is useful and not. So, so that's, that's how you can, you can help. Yeah. And, and we can probably draw from, because, you know, we've got, we said there's a whole bunch of them, you know, maybe let's take a few more perhaps and, and take out that element that that particular theory is good at that none of the other theories actually contain you know so so the mashup really applies to how we do this and this is once again this i mean the mashup concept it's part of our part of our collaborative literacy it's the fact that no everybody's related because everybody has a piece of the puzzle 
yet we're trying to put it into one. And actually we have explicit mechanisms where we, with awareness, we take pieces from many places and put them to something that's better than any of the others. So, mm -hmm. so that's, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds good. Then now we'll continue basically on, on, on this document. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Basically, yeah. you know, take this document and every single page, write it, uh, refactor it for OSC specific, collaborative literacy specific. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And start learning about collaborative literacy. We just found out about it yesterday. So <laughs> we're, <laughs> it's, nice. it's, uh, we're into <laughs> rapid learning here. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent. So let's let's set this uh, meeting for next time, same time, yeah? Uh -huh. Okay. Thanks a lot. So we'll talk later. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. I'm cutting the voice.